Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and welcome back to Michael's Matters. And of course, <laughs> I'm Michael, hi and hello. And really one of the biggest questions that anyone facing retirement either now or later or maybe even later later is to know when is the best time to retire. And sure, you're going to get all kinds of crazy advice from friends and from family members and people like me on YouTube. <laughs> but the thing is that retirement is a tricky position for most Americans. And that can be even more daunting when you're trying to factor in when should you start taking your Social Security benefits. So whether that is Social Security retirement, Social Security disability, SSDI, survivors, spousal benefits, or really any of the other iterations of Social Security. The biggest reason for this is because when you start your Social Security, benefits. It is essentially destiny for how much you will get when you start receiving your Social Security benefits, obviously, but also how much you will ever get out of the program in its entirety. I mean, really, truly, when you are 95 years old, the age you start your benefits will actually still be affecting how much money you're getting monthly. So today we're going to talk about when retiring at the earliest age at 62 makes sense and weigh out some of the pros and cons of doing so. Now, this is Michael's Matters and before we get to it, if you like these videos, if you find them interesting, if you find them helpful, or hey, if you find them useful, you know, please <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe uh, because it does really help the channel to grow and we are so, so thankful for that. But also uh, because you get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. All right, now let's get down to the video. So first things first, for Social Security retirement in the United States in 2023, the earliest that someone can start claiming benefits is at the age of 62 years old. This is very, very early considering the full retirement age at the point at which you get 100% of your Social Security benefits um, is not until 66 or 67 years old. And also considering that folks are living considerably longer. So retiring at 62 is going to be either retiring four or five years early. Now for most folks, I would say <laughs> this seems like a great idea, right? To be able to retire at 62, to not have to wait for any of the extra time and you can stop working. It means that, uh, you know, you have more time to do whatever it is that people do when they retire, I guess you know, build ships and bottles, or <laughs> that's what I would do. But retiring at 62 has some pretty serious drawbacks that would need to be uh, weighed out seriously uh, before anyone tries to retire at that earliest age at 62. First, let's talk about the financial drawbacks because really this is gonna be the biggest hindrance to retiring at 62. This is because the way the Social Security program is set up is that the sweet spot for someone to retire under Social Security calculations is at that full retirement age. It's when someone has worked enough time and paid in enough Social Security so that the amount that they put in will figure out to last as long as that person is likely to need those benefits. In terms of the full retirement age at 66 or 67, that is the spot where the porridge is not too hot, it's not too cold, but it is just right. The reality though is that many, many, many Americans, they don't make it that far. In fact, most retire early at 64 nationally, but there's a lot of variance in this depending on which states you live in. So for example, if you live in states like Alabama and Kentucky and Michigan, uh, they have an average retirement age at 63 or even Alaska where they retire earlier than that. So if 66 and 67 is the designated full retirement age, uh, there is gonna be a, an incentive by the government to dissuade folks from retiring as early as they can at 62. Because again, it would mean they would be paying less into Social Security for less time and taking out benefits for longer and starting earlier. To dissuade folks from doing this, uh, like they do with the red lights or like they do with paying your taxes on time or jaywalking, they put a penalty on Social Security benefits for retiring early. For someone who does decide to start taking Social Security benefits at 62 years old, their starting Social Security benefits will be around 30% less than they would have been had they waited to their full retirement end, which can be quite a big hit to someone's benefits. Now, if that is not bad enough, the penalty stays with the early retiree for the rest of their life. It's not like once they get to that full retirement age, they can opt into their full retirement benefits. Oh no, they are stuck with a 30% lower benefit or in perpetuity. Furthermore, it means that when the cost of living adjustment or that COLA happens every single year, it is a percentage increase, but it is a percentage increase based off the lower initial amount. So that means that that person will never really truly gain back that ground that they lost by retiring early rather than waiting to their full 
retirement age. Now, lastly, if an early retiree is doing the early retiree math and thinks that, you know what, if I retire early, I start getting a smaller amount, but I get it for a longer period of time, then it could actually be more than if I retire later, but get more for a shorter period of time. And while this is true in specific situations, there is actually a point uh, called the break even point, which is the point where if someone does retire at 62, the amount of their lifetime earnings will equal out and actually start losing ground against the higher later benefits for someone who retired at 66 or 67 in their full retirement age, or even someone who waited even longer to 70 at the latest full retirement age, who also gets an additional 30% tacked onto their social security benefits as a bonus, there is a point where that amount catches up to someone who retires earlier. And for someone who retired at 62 versus 66, that age is around 80 years old. It's just a little bit higher for someone who retires in their 70s versus someone who retired at 62. The second most important thing to consider is if you're planning to retire early at 62 years old and you thought, you know what, I may get lower benefits, but that's going to be okay uh, because I'm just going to work a little bit more to make up the difference and help keep the household going. Well, you can do that. Uh, you definitely can. Um, but it may not work out quite as well as you think. Uh, the reason being is that it goes back to the fact that Social Security really is designed to try to avoid having people take out benefits before that sweet spot at the full retirement age, and more so if they are still able to work and, and would just like to supplement their income by having Social Security benefits tacked onto it. The main way that Social Security dissuades people from doing this is by offsetting one's Social Security benefits based off the income they are making from work. For someone who retires at the earliest retirement age at 62 years old, then for every $2 that they earn from working, that is over the amount of $21,240 a year in 2023, Social Security will start removing $1 of their Social Security benefits or offsetting it. Another thing important to note is that the working offset does begin to change when someone starts to approach their full retirement age at 66 or 67, because in the year in which someone will be hitting their full retirement age, that Social Security benefit offset earning limit goes up to $56,520 a year. And then over that, for every $3 that someone earns from working, then $1 will be deducted from one's Social Security benefit. So in that year and really beyond that year, you can make a fair amount of money and still keep most, if not all, of your Social Security benefits. So looking at the way that Social Security is set up, it is kind of really sort of not geared for folks to retire at 60 two years old, although it is an option. I think that most people don't do it as a choice, but as a necessity because they're not able to continue to work or perhaps they have familiar obligations uh, that won't allow them to spend that much time away from home or really any number of things. But I think in general, it is a decision of necessity. And that's why I think it's really important that there should be you know, maybe some sort of special consideration for someone who is going to retire early, uh, but if they're doing it because they're not able to work versus someone who just wants to retire because, you know, they don't want to keep working. <laughs> and I get that too. All right, so that's it for today's Michael's Matters. And uh, I really hope that you found this video interesting or uh, helpful or at least useful. And if you did, uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe uh, because it really does help the channel grow and we are so, so thankful for that. But also because you get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. So, for Michael Matters, I'm Michael, hoping that you take care of yourselves, take care of others, and have a happy, healthy 